Frank. And I'm so glad to be here tonight with my dear friend Janice Nolan and fellow photographer Eric Clark. And tonight I'm going to give you some overviews of some of the portfolios that I've here. I'm going to start with my yeah, knife. Eric's not on until 420, but someone else is on. Can you hear me? Ron, mute yourself. <laughs> yeah, what did she say? He's not muted. Oh, he is. Yeah. yeah we are. I can hear you. He's talking. Hear me? Yes. Yeah, we can. So tonight I'm going to start with a portfolio, some different portfolios I've taken over the years. I'm going to start with the first nude I ever took, which is from my Nyjah series. And I met Nyjah when he came to my loft with his boyfriend in 1982. I was doing still lifes with pearls at the time, and he loved my still life work, and he told me he always wanted to be photographed in pearls. And I said, okay. So he came over in daylight. All these photographs were taken in daylight. And by the way, we never got to the pearls, but we did get to great light from my loft. And this is one of the first uh, news studies I took of him. It's Nyjah Blind Study. It's in the Brooklyn Museum and Museums in Europe. This is Nyjah with black lines. And the most wonderful thing was I adored working with them. And I devised a system where I hand toned the body with selenium so that it would jump off the page. So it's in colors. You see the background is separated from, from the body itself. It was a laborious work, but I love to do it. Lynn, Lynn, let, Lynn, let me ask you a question. How does that relationship build between you and a particular uh, model? Like, how does that start where, you know, you, you when, like, when do you both realize we're connecting? <laughs> immediately, it, started, it began immediately and it lasted in, until his death, actually. But he moved to Europe in 1987. So he had that wonderful personality. He was a special person with a grand personality. Um, it was very special and my husband loved him too. Everybody did. So it was very easy with nausea. But I really, really have a great connection with everybody I work with. And you'll see in my heavy and white, I'm friends with them since 1998. We're still all in contact with each other because it's a very close work. Um, I have a thought, an idea, I create the design and said I talk to people and then we do it. This is what lead for my body image series. I was very interested in shape and weight and eating and how people felt about the bodies. The interesting thing about this is it's taken from a Lalique base, gave me the thought of how to, how to position the bodies. And if you take away the heavy picture, it's not very good. So you start to see how people about their bodies, but how important different shapes were to make for a beautiful image and a beautiful composition. And through this, we all got to like our bodies more. So this is also from my heavy and white series. And this is called Servitude 2. Servitude 1, excuse me. I made 1 and 2. And um, this was about eating shape and weight. But everything was talking about body image. And no matter what, even though she's heavy, there's grace and beauty to her. And I made this white. And I, I developed my own film and created my own set so that you would see body image as concept, not fleshy. You would get more of the idea. And this is women with umbrellas. My husband bought the umbrellas back from Japan because I had a vision of how to see these people, same and different from the back. And the umbrellas, I, I thought, had to be a, you know, God's mirror so that you would not feel too weighted down by them, but that you can concentrate on the rear ends. And there's <laughs> actually eight rear ends here. <laughs> All different. The hardest thing to do with this, this image was they wanted to perform for me and I had to convince them not to move. And so I did. <laughs> and this is called Sabaris because we had such good times together. And this is like Greek women sitting in a circle having a great, great time. And this is actually on the spot because these things happen right then and there. This is spontaneous. Every image actually was caught as, as the image, as the image of time. And this actually was going on at this time. And I caught it and I called it Sabaris. And what are you shooting with, Lynn? These are 
Children show it in prints, all of them. It's not, it's analog. They call it analog today. When I was doing it, it was just showed in prints. They're all tons of gold. So after I printed them and cleaned them and everything, then I put a gold toner on them, on them to cool them. I used special paper. So then I got into objects and I didn't see why any object shouldn't have a picture on it. So I would buy various objects like irons, which represented women, femininity, work, ironing, and pinups. And I bought these irons and then I would um, shoot for the objects. I had a wonderful time shooting for various objects that I made. I made tables, I made boxes, all kinds of things. And I just show, decided to show a couple. Sorry. And this is my eye box. At that time, I put eyes everywhere. I put eyes in eye boxes. These are antique eye washers with silver gelatin prints that I had a medium in these where the silver gelatin prints were um, encased in a medium. And then I did many, many eye pictures. And I found out later that indeed I was having an eye problem. <laughs> so Lynn, w w when you come up with an idea like this, do you labor over it? Or I want to shoot eyes, I want to shoot iron, I want to shoot surfaces. Like, how does that work for you? I only do they get visions, and I have to produce them. So it isn't a matter of laboring over anything. The ideas come up in me, and then I have to make them. And if so, I do. It's not like, should I, shouldn't I? It's like, I have to. Um, right. then, then I do it. Why I chose those, I because in olden times, people used eye droppers like that with chloric acid to clean their eyes. And I was still of an age where people clean their eyes with eye, I, um, they would put it to their eye, lean their head back and use the droppers. Okay, so next series is a transition. I was transitioning gelatin dark room which I adored to something more in digital. So these are scanned silver gelatin prints printed on transparency and this globe represented to me the continuing life force in the stomach passing on from one person to the next holding on to the light and this is called contemplation it was actually the first image that I printed. And this is called ampersand, like the and. And um, this is also from that series of globe. And I also did it in gold leaf. So the beads of the globe. And I designed a special tissue. They're suspended in plexi. There's a tissue in between the pieces of plexi. So that when a stroke hits the image, it glows electric. So you really think there's an electric bulb inside. I love doing it. And this is balance from that series as well. This, uh, this is an accurate to what it is because the gold leaf is very, uh, it's hard to photograph, but these were also double gilded with 14 karat gold, 22 karat gold. And it made for a beautiful image. The show gelatin on transparency. And then I wanted to show you something I did at the beach. Now you can't see this because it's a flat surface, but this is in three layers. I love layering, and that's how I got to the plexi layering, the gold leaf layering, the nigel layering, even the, the my heavy and white layer. And actually, these are three pieces of plexi. So there's a bottom layer, there's a top layer with just this that that's on top. In, in a smaller plexi and a layer on top of that. So and where is this shot, get, Lynn? Where? Coney Island. This is shot in Coney Island. I love Coney Island. So in person, you have dimension. And I love dimension. And it was interesting. And this is called Men Four Times. It's also in a layer. I shot this also in Coney Island when the sand was really blowing. And I wanted to show motion. And so in there and not there. So this is in layers. There's a top layer, a bottom layer, and another layer. So in person, you get to see the dimension because that's, that's what I like. And now I'm going to show you, um, I, I'm also a video artist. 
they create a lot of videos and I just showed the, the Alamo I'm going to be showing in Cinema Village I'm going to be showing next week in another theater here I, I make many different videos they're short they're experimental and I, I created this idea from the seagulls that I saw in Florida and it has to do with the continuation of life and death where the seagulls in the ocean oh, yeah, you'll I, see how these are and, and Lynn, like when when did you start to get into video? How was oh, that tr that transition for you? So I started video. I also used video with photography because I combine both because I see myself as a photographer that continues the moment through video. That's what I like. So usually my imagery is made up of both. Not always because I don't limit myself to anything. But um. Oh, I have to look at the camera. So I forget the cameras there. So anyway, this is this was taken in Sarasota. You'll see there's rain over the palm trees. That was taken through my window. That's the ocean. This is the seagulls. And you'll see she's playing a violin. It's original sound from, from a violinist. And I just can't think of her name right now. She's so wonderful. Funda. She's a well-known violinist, and she played original music for this. I'm just showing excerpts now. Teasers, as they call it. So the full videos are longer, a little bit longer, but my videos are about three or four minutes, some five to eight, but usually four. And each video you're going to see is, is a teaser. I was afraid that people would have to sit four minutes and 64 seconds. It's a lot. This video I'm really proud of. It has to do with plastic in the ocean. It's a teaser. By the sea, by the sea, by the beautiful sea, and me, and me, talk about it will be. What? Oh, my wife, I stopped. Yeah, the sound is not working. I'm not hearing the sound at all, Lim. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, something's happening to the Wi-Fi. Can we start it again? It's a shame. Yeah, you guys are having technical issues. There you go. Is it a problem with the sound? Yes, they can't hear the sound. It's sort of intermittent. Zoom and video, it's a little bit of a problem. Uh, I'm sorry. Thank you. 
Yeah, yeah Lynn, where was this shot? I'll tell you. Um, it was shot in Coney Island and also partly for the ocean gave me the plastic to use. And the why is what it uses internationally to teach people, to show people all over the world about plastic and the ocean. That's a permission this year. And the great sound to it, I'm so sorry. Yeah. This, this plastic came from a because so it's 80 years without it's too warm for me. I'm not going because what am I going to do there? So I'm sorry you couldn't hear the sound. It's really amazing because. Yeah, next time. Next time? No, no, let, let's hear that. Maybe the next one's better. Okay, I hope so, or else we're gonna have to restart it. So this, this that I'm gonna show you now, so I took from my deck here. I just recently did it and it's been showing all over and you know, all over Europe and it's showing a lot in New York. And this is a teaser, not the full video. So good luck, I hope we can hear it. My neighbors performed. <laughs> Yeah, that, that was, was a little better. Yeah. This is just the teaser. The full movie is playing now, but I I didn't know how much time it would take and to sit for the full key. Four minutes is a long time for people. So I can always send a person a download link to be able to play it themselves. How about the film festival? Yeah, the film festival, yes. So this just played at the Alamo in Brooklyn in downtown Brooklyn, full screen. And it was exciting to see. And it's going to be playing in Cinnamon Village on 13th Street at the end of October. And it's going to be playing on 44th Street on the 21st in the Project Room and other places. And also it's been playing all over the world, actually, to represent my feeling about New York. Great, great. And do you sell prints um, from your website? I sell prints well, actually directly if people get in touch with me and I've sold my books on the website and I have some vintage uh, prints also for sale right now on my store and I'm gonna add to my store. But if people are interested um, to purchase any prints, they can um, purchase directly from me, thank goodness. There you go. And so do you feel that you're going to stay more in the moving image or you'll just be keep, keep on going back and forth? So I have no idea. Right now, I've lost a lot of my personal assistance. I work one-on-one -on -one with people because, as you know, I, I hate the technical, but I'm the director and the artist on the job. So I take everything myself and I work one-on-one -on -one with someone technically. So I lost the people now because I'm... Um, Broadway opened and other things opened and they have important positions. So also I'm working right now on travel images that I took here in Coney Island, Italy and Greece. I'm printing them in interesting ways. And I'm putting my videos on hold for now because festivals, even if it's on Vimeo, they want to reconfigure it to their particular screens. But I have a whole lot of videos waiting. I'm going to be doing table settings, surreal table settings that I took here. And mm -hmm. so I'm very busy, you know, with, and I never stop working because it's my passion. There you go. Great. Yeah. Great, great, great. That was terrific.
and I have to do what has been. Yes, why not? Why not? And, um, and do you um, do you ever go back to those other models and you know thinking of like doing something else with them over time, sort of like a time capsule? Everything has to do with the time that I'm doing it. I'm friends with these people. Right. So now I just visited Samantha, who's one of my main models, who's upstate, and Anne Marie, the heavy model, she lives now in France. And Nina's not out in California. And we, we're always in contact with each other. Mostly, I am still friends with everybody. Right. Elena. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't think about what I'm going to do with somebody when, or am I going to do it again? <clears throat> if the idea is compelling to me, I produce it. Right. I do what compels me. Okay. Not, it's, it's sort of like um, like the woman with umbrellas. I made my poor husband bring them all back from, from Japan because of the concept. So these concepts can tell me. Right, and then you act on them quickly. I do, and I, and, and I still see myself as a photographer continuing, continuing a big moment in time because when you just see the moment, you don't always see everything that's happening within that moment. And that's very satisfying for me to be able to produce. Yeah. And do, do you write notes? You know, like well, the I, idea? I write no, no notes. It's a visual. I get visual, right. visuals. And then it pushes me. And then I, 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 uh, I'm pushed by my visuals. Great. That really was terrific. Everyone in the um, in the chat room, you know, loves your work. And okay. and, and 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 say your um say your website again so okay. people can see. My, so my website's lindyonti.com. We'll link it. Pardon? We'll we'll link it in the chat. Okay, oh. great, great, Elena. Yes, and uh, I'm glad they liked it because I certainly love doing it. Yeah, and um, I, like I tell all the artists that that um that come on. When you have new work and you want to show it, just let me know. I'd love to have you come back. It's always, it's always a, stand, a standing offer. What a pleasure, and thanks for your patience with me. No, no, no. You're, um, you're a gift to have on. So, so we, we thank you very, very much. Thank you. Um, I so, of Doug Rice is here, and I, I did this dinner conversation. They were kind enough to perform of this dinner conversation with me in my loft on Lisbonard Street. And he's a wonderful sculpture and painter. He's right there. That was right. <laughs> okay, great. Well, if he reads, we'll have him um, present as well.